Let's see how strong this one is. Oh no! This is a piece of plastic that'll make your fingers stronger. And we're gonna talk about how. And then we're going to break these. We have barely filled ones, 75% filled ones, and a thing to pull it that's 100% filled. And if you're a 3D printer enthusiast, you will enjoy this. And if you wanna make your fingers stronger, you will also enjoy this. Why do you make these shaped the way they are? So with a hangboard or a campus board, it's really easy to make a straight cut. It's what we've used for a number of years. Yeah. This though, my fingers are not the same length. They're not gonna pull at the same time. So what we're really looking for for training is an adaptation and not to force our fingers to fit onto that edge. Does this do something for my muscles or does it just make it more comfortable? So a little bit of both, right? So there's the ergonomic side, which is if something's uncomfortable, you can't produce as much force, you can't be as strong. Uh, that means it's not working with your body nearly as well. So not only does this allow you to produce more force, but it does it more comfortably. Uh, those go hand in hand, but also that all of your fingers can pull at a really good position. If you hold your hand like this, that's the optimal muscle length for force production. Mm. So if I can just produce force there, or if I'm setting directly against this block like this, then I can pull a bit harder with that. But also if my fingers are more comfortable, I don't have to stop due to torn skin. I can pull a little bit harder consistently, better gain. So you made us three different sizes to sell at our store, mm -hmm. but you have prints, 3D print models for a ton of these. Yes. Yeah. How and why? Like how many iterations did you go through before you came up with this? So before even the printing, I was doing woodworking for these where I would, you know, measure out specific fingers and drill press them. I did a couple dozen just for myself and then another couple dozen for other people. And then when I got into the 3D printing prototyping, which went a lot faster, um, I stopped counting file numbers of different iterations uh, past 200. <laughs> and that was before I even switched the material and to this current design. So how many looking... people's hands did you measure, you said? Uh, so with just the woodworking, that was just a couple dozen, but people have also sent me measurements. I have another couple hundred hand measurements in a file before I went to the average sizing. So I actually didn't know people's fingers were uh, obviously different sizes in general, but so the ring finger can be longer than the index finger. Yeah, so my ring finger is definitely longer than my index. I know people that have a longer index than ring. Yeah. I know people that have a much longer ring finger than index where it's like closer like this, Interesting. vice versa. And the pinky can be really different. I find with these things, people kind of, if you're a climber, you look at it and you go, oh yeah, I do have a long ring finger or I do have a short pinky. And so a lot of climbers kind of know that because they haven't gotten this, you know. What their... is what is the average? Or what's like, a lot of people are right-handed versus left. What is most common with ring finger versus index? So your hand shape is really common where they're really close to even. The yeah. ring finger being slightly longer uh, tends to happen yeah. um, or a bigger disparity like mine. My hand um, is probably the close second behind yours. So we have a small, medium, and large does the height change in these? So the depths of these and then the actual height difference of each of the edges will change a little bit, as will the round over, as will the diameter of each of the finger, because they're not just the same edge across there. So every little thing changes and it's not just shrinking or expanding the thing. Now we did a short where we tried to break one of these and uh, the comments were how to make it stronger, which is funny because I think it's stronger than your fingers. It broke a <laughs> couple pounds shy of the world one-arm deadlift record, <laughs> which is a world's strongest man with a lifting strap on a bar. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't so, know anybody that can clear 300 pounds on this, and this is more than double that. What happens if this does break? Does it hurt people if these break, or does, does it just go flying and you potentially smack yourself? So unlike a lot of wood implements where they just suddenly explode mm -hmm. and there's lots of instagram videos of those unfortunately where um not only can you know that the shrapnel can the weight itself be potentially injurious mm. so i've not known anybody injure themselves that way you could drop the weight you could drop the weight and some climbers will have like dumbbells and things on it which is a really bad idea um they're just freely moving so when it slams back down they fall off but even that sudden shock load where you go from really heavy force to no force can be injurious these don't catastrophically fail um even previous prototypes when they were breaking, you know, where the cord was originally and things like that, it'll pull through and you can hear it crumple. Um, but I've never had anybody injure themselves. Any break that's been caught on video has been someone trying to lift it and suddenly the device just kind of, you see the cord pull through where the edge, you know, flexes quite a bit. 
Um, but again, previous, previous, previous iterations. And these are pretty reasonably priced relative to other edge. Yeah, Natural yeah. Edges. I mean, especially for things that are like this, this is pretty standard, I would say, for the price. Mm -hmm. um, but compared to a lot of the wood blocks out there that aren't as good for training on and can catastrophically fail and can't take this kind of weight, uh, these are quite a bit less expensive and lighter, more portable. Cool. And so yours come with a Dyneema cord, mm -hmm. and you're going to demonstrate to us. Um, it was kind of shocked me when he showed me how to use it. I was like, oh, you're just going to muscle this thing through. And you like have a very specific strategy you do with it. Yes, yeah. You have a good a, lifting form, as it were. Because um, you take working out very serious. <laughs> so, I'm known to train on occasion. Yeah, yes. so I, I go to climb for fun. And so this, he will show us what I don't know. We're going to just lift any kind of free weight. This is a dumbbell. Uh, I generally use a loading pin with Olympic plates, something of that sort. Uh, can even be used against an immovable object where you're simply pulling against that. In this case, I want to try to have it as balanced as possible. And really what I want to do is try to position myself over the object as as balanced myself. So I'm not left to right too far, not too forward, not too far back. So what I end up doing is get my feet as close as I am comfortable to the weight. I'm going to go ahead and flex my legs down like this. I set my grip against the edge so it's flat against my fingers. I'm simply going to lock my arm against my body and stand straight up. It's not a lower body exercise, so I'm not really worried about the lockout that I have with this. I'm simply worried about loading my fingers long enough. Set it back down. Obviously, the dumbbell's a little bit unwieldy, so you have to reset in between each of these. How long do you lift it and how many times? Uh, it depends on the person. Uh, realistically, for a strength intervention, we're just going to lift it to be in control. Think of it like uh, like a bench press or a pull-up. It's not how long do you do the pull-up, it's you're just doing the exercise. Since this is for the fingers and they're not moving, just demonstrate control with the weight, set it back down. And we're not going to quite be to failure, but it should be reasonably difficult, challenging to lift it. You're going to do it enough times that you are not going to overdo uh, on your fingers because functionally... You know, you're training to climb better, not to lift weights better. Uh, you want it as centered underneath you as possible. Yep. Cool. My open-toed socks here seem quite dangerous. <laughs> so, you know, the dumbbell's a bit unwieldy with this one. But do yeah. I need to hold my arm or can I just... My arm is straight, so does it matter? What you'll want to do is you want to kind of lean back into it so your arm is pinned against your body. Yep, like that, then stand straight up. And I don't hold it. Uh, you don't need to hold it for any longer than demonstrating control. When the weight is heavy, it'll take a moment or two to get off the ground. You lock it out because that's naturally where your legs want to go. A quick moment, then back down. That's all you're going to need rather than necessarily holding it for a weight, uh, for a duration. Yeah. Um, some protocols out there have people hold it for duration. If you're doing that already and that's what's comfortable to you, go ahead and continue. Now, I don't want to say this is not hard, but I feel like I could lift more. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> so again, er ergonomics and strength do go hand in hand with the body. So I mean, I'm not that strong of a climber, but that, that seemed doable. <laughs> Be honest. How many pounds do you lift? Uh, I can do about 200, a um, little north of that, 210. What do you do if you're training, not trying to just see how much you can do? Do you actually do 200 for um, breakfast or? No, for training purposes, we do a slightly different exercise rather than simply a lift myself just because of the level of training I have. Um, and that's going to be what's called an isometric overcoming where I'm trying to flex my fingers against something that's not moving using this. I can do near body weight, which, um, I don't know a lot of other climbers even get near that with that exercise. So why don't you just lift yourself then? Uh, cause I anchor myself to something. Usually I'll have like a spotter <laughs> arm over to me or a leg roller or something like that so that I can't move. Okay. Um, yeah. So you need this to be strong enough. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, ideally, and you're going to use it multiple times. Right. Yeah. It's, it doesn't have to be strong this time. It has to be strong okay. for your training. So I want to make sure that I can walk away knowing how to do this correctly. Um, do you do both hands evenly? Mm -hmm. Like, how long am I doing this? Am I doing this in the morning, in the evening, and then I still go climbing? Do you do this on climbing days? You can. I would always be conservative with what you're training. Um, again, being mindful that you're training for becoming stronger at climbing. So if you're going to train right before a climbing session, you're going to be fatigued. Your fingers are going to be fatigued. Injury risk will increase. Uh, you can do it early in a day and come back and climb much later. Give it six to eight hours between. Um, you can do it on off days. 
It's not a recovery day though, so it's a training day by itself. And you can really gradually kind of dose this in to determine your body's capacity to adapt to this, and also allow it to just adjust to new training interventions. Do I want to lift as much as I can in, in 10 reps? Or do I want to do 100 reps? What's so, going to give me the best strength when I go climbing? So strength is always going to go to that more towards that one rep max side, except for as we get closer to a one rep max, the, the heaviest you can possibly lift, the risk of injury increases because the potential for <laughs> failure increases. So if you're just not well enough recovered to do your one rep max, um, you know, your fingers are going to start opening up. That's the one thing of any given form that you want to make sure of is the way our, the anatomy of our fingers means they don't like to open under heavy load. And so if you're trying to lift this and the weight is too much and your fingers are going, the injury risk is pretty high. The fatigue to your joints is really high. Um, so we don't ever quite go that far. Cause we're like, I got one party trick. It's to break stuff. So we're going to break this, but I, I don't want to break this. So if I could magically just be warmed up one rep would be, that's the perfect workout. But you kind of want to warm yourself up to it. And is that what the other reps are for? So you'd warm yourself up to it progressively, adding a bit of weight uh, to it. Yeah. But you're not probably going to want to go strictly to a one rep max repeatedly. Um, there's a continuum of like, as it gets to one rep max, it's more and more strength. But you need a lot of volume because you're going to have one set for one rep max that's not a lot of stimulus to the body. And again, the injury risk is pretty high. So when you're just starting out, below 15 reps is good to get used to the form okay. and know how your body recovers. And then for most climbers, below 10 reps in a set, again, not failing within the set. So your fingers should not open. It should feel very challenging at the end. And as you get more training history, more seasons under your belt of training, you can move that rep range down a little bit. I tend to do about four or five reps. Okay. So there's a balance. Um, let's start pulling on this stuff. I'm excited about it because he's printed something pretty cool. This is our hand. This is the inverse of the edges. And we're going to be pulling with this because it is 100% fill. And we hope that's strong enough. First, let's see how strong this one is. So I tied a sliding X on this guy. And we have that tied. And that is the fingers we're going to put in there. It's not the fill, it's the shape. Oh, the layers are so cool. Holy cow, how much is that in English? This isn't even the one that you normally make. This is the, the weaker so one. We did, when we drilled it, we really compromised it. Yeah, so our last test was with holes in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's not, not a fair test. No, I, I thought it would be fair enough because it was pulling straight and perforated, this thing. Yeah, that's almost a kilonewton mold, and it didn't even break. <laughs> it's funny, as we were worried about if this was strong enough right here. Easy peasy. Hmm. What should we do next? What is this solution and a redneck have in common? They're both red. So let's try pulling on that and see if it works. Hi, it worked! That's what happens when you only pull with two fingers. That is actually interesting how that's made. It seems like the Dyneema in this groove seemed to be fine. I do like how even... It's pushing against these, even though it's just like these two middle fingers. It is pretty tight in there. This is pulling enough at the bottom that it's levering it the way I want it. Now remember, this is not what he makes. The walls are denser on this. And so let's see how strong this is. The results are gonna vary. So that's what 75% looks like. And 15 is the honeycomb shape. It's just because it's it's this guy pressing it on there. Yep. Yep. That's what that initial actual crack is. Now for the grand finale. This entire thing is 75% infill. I knew I should have worn eye protection. Yeah, that's 75% infill right there. How long did this take to print? Four and a half hours. Oh, that's a long time. How long does a normal one take to print? Two hours, 15. Oh, it's still attached to my thing. It's still attached to my, oh, my product placement. That's what that's attached to. So it's strong enough. 
Cool. I think we knew that before we went into this. Can I hang this off of something? And you can anchor it above you. You can go below. It doesn't have to be attached to weights. Um, you're putting the same force and it, your arm doesn't really matter whether or not it's below or above you. What we're talking about is finger adaptation. So as long as you are pulling against that edge, uh, you're producing the exact same kind of stimulus that's gonna get your finger stronger for climbing. How long is your waiting list right now? <laughs> for my individual prints? <laughs> uh, probably about three weeks, four weeks out, uh, I would say is a good bet. Uh, as of filming this, I have some in stock, but as of 10 minutes after we publish it, I don't know. Do you ever jump us in front of the line? Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> This, is, uh, this one's a really easy one to set up versus the the home shop is I, I've got about 600 different models to select and some of them get personalized so that takes even longer so if I'm just sitting there having to select these things I can just print another one of these really easily because it's always the same form factor and everything cool if you like this kind of thing we got it if you really really want it special you can wait weeks and he can make it for you thanks for watching thanks <laughs>